Well, Ed Sheeran has been called many things. Brilliant songwriter, loyal friend, but now he's picking up a new title, Bad Boy. Here to give us the scoop is iHeartRadio ambassador Patrick Langlois. Great to see you, Patrick. Ed Sheeran, he's got no problem pumping out hit tunes, but what about getting hit and being hit? Uh, he's making a lot of headlines for injuries lately. Yeah, uh, Ed Sheeran, uh, you know, for all the accolades and gold records that he's had, he's never graced the uh, co uh, cover of the Rolling Stone magazine. That all changes on Friday. And yeah, you always think of Ed Sheeran being the uh, love song writing good guy, but he has quite a bad boy side to him. Some of the things that we find out in this issue uh, are that he is hooked up with many of Taylor Swift's famous friends. We find out how he got the big scar that he's uh, gotten recently on his face. He was hanging out with uh, James Blunt and Princess Beatrice, and someone thought it would be a good idea to Knight James Blunt and uh, the uh, sword went haywire onto Ed Sheeran's face. So that's another uh, that's another crazy story. He also fell asleep kind of drunkenly in a grassy area filled with deadly snakes by Russell Crowe's house in Australia. In Australia. Um, he almost lost the use of his hand when he uh, decided drunkenly to play uh, drums with two empty beer bottles. And just recently, with Justin Bieber, someone thought it'd be a great idea to have Justin Bieber lay down, hold a golf ball in his teeth, and have Ed Sheeran swing a golf club at him. Now, um, Ed Sheeran is clearly a better songwriter than he is a golf player because he swung and he missed and he hit Justin Bieber square in the jaw. And uh, thank God that he didn't hit Bieber in the temple because the headlines would be a bit different this morning. It would be Bieber is over. Yeah, I'm noticing a common thread in all those stories. Alcohol. All right, let's talk about musically. What is it and why is it taking the music world by storm? Now, I like to think that uh, I keep my ear to the ground on all things music, but until just recently, I had no idea what Musical.ly was. Uh, yet, it's an app that was released in 2014. Last summer, it shot to the top of the App Store, and it hasn't left the top 40 since. Now, you remember Vine, the six-second video application that was created by Twitter? That was killed off last year, and Vine gave us such stars as Shawn Mendes, Ruth B. Uh, well, now that it's gone, uh, it seems like Musical.ly has the coast clear to really, really take over, and the, uh, the concept is similar. It's 15-second videos this time, and the idea is basically taking YouTube and Snapchat and putting them together. What you do, uh, the app is pretty easy. I used it for all of five minutes, and I had my own 15-second lip sync video. You choose a song that's already in the app, and then there's a bunch of filters that you can add to it, and lo and behold, you have a 15-second lip sync video. And just as Vine, there's a whole star system uh, of musers, as they call them. Uh, there, there's uh, twins from Russia called Lisa and Lena, who now have their own clothing line. Um, Ariel, Baby Ariel is the breakout star of the app. She's the face of Musical.ly. She has over 17 million followers. Jacob Satorius is a musician who just signed, and he will be releasing music pretty soon. And there's 150 million people on Musical.ly, mostly teenagers. So unless you uh, live with a teenager, you probably have never heard of this. But the music industry is taking notice and is being very, very proactive at but, uh, licensing music but to hold Musical.ly. On. I, I, got, uh, I gotta Lady stop Gaga, you for a second. Selena Gomez. I gotta uh, stop you because Go I gotta stop you because they're they're lip syncing. Why is anybody signing these people when they're not demonstrating in any way, shape, or form that they can sing? That's a very, very good question. I, I, Jacob Satorius was discovered there, and then you're able to do a bunch of comic skits as well. So there are some skits where you're able to, to showcase your voice, but th the main attraction is lip syncing. That is correct. All right. And so they're just being discovered because there are so many people on the app, and uh, you know, artists are really, really using Musical.ly to promote their music. Katy Perry, uh, when she released Chain to the Rhythm, one of the first places that she promoted her music was Musical.ly. All right, well, one last question for you because you got John and Paul, you got Axl Rose and Slash, Jagger and Keith. Uh, it's always a debate between lead singer and lead guitarist. Obviously, we're not talking about the one-armed drummer from Def Leppard because he's the star there. But who is the most important member of a band? According to science, it's not uh, the drummer who's the foundation of, of the song. It's not the singer who's the face of the band, but it is the basis. Now, there's a study uh, led here uh, in a university in Hamilton that found that listeners had an easier time to finding and understanding rhythm when it was played at lower tones, such as the bass. They also found that you're more likely to sing along, 
tap along if uh, it was more bass driven. And now to hit the nail on the head even more, there's another study this time at Northwestern U University that found that um, you felt more confident and you felt like, uh, you know, the world was your oyster when you listened to very bass driven tracks. And so according to science, the bass player is the most important part of the band. And so if you have a big presentation today, an exam perhaps, listen to a song that's pretty bass heavy and you'll do better. Well, thank you very much. And it's not just scientists, Megan Trainer, who's been saying it over and over that it's all about that bass.